Shalom, my kid, Mr. Brother Karate, is out here in Orlando, Jim in Florida. We do a um, podcast today. I seen a video, <clears throat> and I want to just do a quick podcast on it. But um, basically, I got videos on my GMS Florida study channel. Um, why do Israelites hate white people slash Edomites? And the white wall of defense and reflection. Mainly the white wall of deflex, defense and deflection. So I'm going to pull this video up. It's on World Star Hip Hop. And this guy is going to eloquently... Um, this guy is going to eloquently um, put a point out about white America but he ba remember I was saying in my video that we don't ever have to mention color to people like when we out there we're not out there mentioning we don't necessarily mention color we're talking about nationalities like Edomites Israelites and so on and so forth so called white people what they do is they're so obsessed with color that just because you're talking about a nation or you might say, you know, you might say something in reference to a nation, they automatically take it as white and black, and they always are the first ones to mention color. So I'm gonna give you an example right here. And they always try to deny any wrongs that they've done. They don't want to be held accountable for what they've done. And if you mention the things that they've done, they automatically try to say that you're racist and bring up the whole color thing, the whole, as they say, the color crutch. I'm going to play the video. Um, Dream Defenders came out of the realization, as the senator said, and other people in this audience know that the people that are murdering the people in our communities are very organized. And so if you're going to mount uh, ample resistance to those forces, then you must be organized. And so we started Dream Defenders with that in mind, knowing that it wasn't just about Trayvon Martin, but it's about a system of police repression, uh, police harassment, racial profiling, We've got a school to prison pipeline. We've got a war on drugs that's been afflicting, dividing, and killing our community since it started. Um, we've got a war on the poor. We've got a war on immigrant communities. And if you're going to mount a uh, fight against a, a system that has for 400 years perfected the method of repression of people that look like me, look like us, then you've got to have an organized force to fight against that. So we started in Florida with that in mind. I noticed he never said black or white he's speaking in reference to a system created by a certain ethnicity which ethnicities are not white or black ethnicities are bloodlines ethnicity or genetic genetics so to speak genetics have no genetics have nothing to do with what color you are I mean it does but I mean bloodlines have nothing to do with color you are okay you can be a white you could be a white Roman or you could be a brown Roman, or you could be a black Roman, because your parents came through the line of the Romans, okay, as an example. All right, so let's go ahead and keep playing. Do you see what Senator McCaskill talks about, the elective office as one way? Because you just bit off a lot, yeah. a lot. <laughs> well, I think we the people to do it, I'm hungry. And I think, you know, I think running for office is good, but one of the last things that Dr. King said before he died was that he feared that he had brought us into a burning building. And so if you're getting people elected into a system that by its very nature was meant to cannibalize and kill communities, then you've only done half of the job. And so I think it's a... Notice he's talking about the system. Yes, and we need people that look like us, but black officers, um, I've had interactions with black officers that were way worse than white officers. Um, and so... Um, Notice he said he has black officers that were way worse than white officers, which is true. Black officers are the worst ones. Let's keep going. It's not a, man, mem, a matter of just having a representative that's on the city council or in the mayor's office or on the police force that looks like you. They've got to come from the community, know the issues of the community, and then there's folks in the community that got to remind them every day that we pay your bills. And we're watching every single day to ensure that um, the platform on which we elected you with is followed and also defend you when those people that seek to calibrate the system and write the, write the system as it's been built. Seeing the so-called white man face again uncomfortable. Now this thing that this man is speaking is, is sounds like a good system, a just system where you have the people watching and making in these police or whoever these officials are held accountable to the people that they service. 
Whereas in America, it's totally the opposite. So this man is bringing up a very eloquent and good point. He'll seek to come at you for that office. Now here's the thing, Philip. See how uncomfortable the so-called white man is? <laughs> He's very uncomfortable. It was, and there's nothing to be uncomfortable about. Look at all the black people around and look at look at the white man. Look at the white woman. She even clapping, but look at the white man. Look at his face. It tells you everything. Now the dude the dude didn't call white people the devil or nothing like that. He just put out a, a good point that, you know, that the system is not work is not it's not right and it's against so called black people, man. Negroes, man. White man got uncomfortable. Let's keep going. Everybody doesn't agree with you. Everybody doesn't see the root of the problem. Ross Kaminsky is one of them. Ross Kaminsky writes for American Spectator. And he thinks, in fact, that a lot of folks should be looking at themselves in the mirror. I want to be really clear on this because I agree with what the mayor of Ferguson said that, uh, you know, middle-class white guys like me haven't lived the african-american life that said from what we see on the news from what we read there seems to be a real dearth of uh leadership among african-american young men especially in their neighborhoods and the other thing uh, is I, I if i could react to uh, what philip said i i get the feeling i understand this feeling of, of uh, you know, this system isn't fair. It's biased against us. But then when you start going to this idea, 400 years of repression in a system that's still designed to hurt us and still designed to keep us down, that starts feeling to me like uh, racism against me just because of the color of my skin. Now, just because it's a true fact that we've been in America over 400 years and we've been under we was in slavery and then the system was created to keep us in slavery and to keep us subservient and to keep our numbers low that's a true fact so you're telling me that because this is a true fact that you that you guys created that america created you're telling me that if we speak that fact that all of a sudden we're racist that's crazy uh, my parents weren't here 400 years ago. My, 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 my family arrived here way after the Civil War. We had nothing to do with it. And this is the, this is the thing where most white people come up to us. And we, that's what they say to us whenever we bring out the whole thing about slavery and we bring out the pictures of what they were doing. They all say the same thing. My people wasn't here. We're from somewhere in Europe. We, we weren't in America. We didn't have slaves. But the main question is, are you telling me that America was the only place that had slaves? The slave trade was all over the whole world. They had slaves in France. They had slaves in, all over Europe. They had slaves in England. They had slaves in, 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 in um, Russia. There's slaves everywhere, man. It's called the slave trade, the international slave trade. Don't tell me about your people wasn't here and you didn't... You didn't participate in slavery. You did. Your people did participate in it. Everybody wanted to get out of slavery. Everybody wanted to say that they didn't do it. Like some uh, some imaginary people came from nowhere and they put some people in slavery and now all of a sudden they gone. They, they children not on the earth no more. This is uh, Zechariah 11 and 5. It says, Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty and they that sell them say, Blessed be the Lord God, for I'm, a rich, for I'm rich, and their own shepherds pity them not. Now it says, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. Now, when we came to America, we were possessions. All right? And who possessed us? The so-called, well, let's not even say the so-called white. We'll say, yeah, the so-called white man. And we'll say the so-called Europeans possessed us. And they slayed us. And they're still slaying us today. And it says that they hold themselves not guilty. Everybody want to put up the white wall of defense. And say you're racist. I had nothing to do with slavery. Because you're mentioning the, the, the facts. That slavery happened. And you're still feeling the effects of slavery today. That's racist. You can't say that. I didn't have slaves. I wasn't in America. 
I was in Europe and there was no slaves in Europe. So this is the point, man. These so-called white people, they put up the white wall of defense and reflection, try to defend themselves, say they wasn't here, and they reflect it on you and say you're racist because you even mentioned slavery. That's bullshit, man. Keep looking at this. And I think that uh, a lot of people in the rest of America uh, feel like we're being blamed for things that, uh, that that we didn't cause, and in fact that we would like to we would like to help because we should care for every. Now that's a fucking lie. Americans put people in slavery. So-called white people from Brit um, England put people in slavery. French, the French put people in slavery. All of you guys, the whole world, put Negroes in slavery. And now you're saying that you feel like you're being held responsible for you, something you didn't do. You felt you you are reaping the benefits of it. You still have the Negroes in in possession. They're not in chains anymore, but they're in mental they're in mental slavery. You're not hanging them anymore. But you're shooting them down with your police officers. And y'all don't care about it until, until you see on the news that people riding. It was not a problem until you seen people riding. Now it's a problem. Now it's all. Oh, I feel you guys pain. But we didn't do it. We didn't do it. So who the fuck did do it? Did some aliens come down and put us in fucking slavery? Who did it? It was you so called white man. You don't want to own up to what you did. Everybody who's laughing and snickering, no, let me make a point to you. St. Louis, uh, there was a St. Louis County poll done just last week, in which roughly 60% of the people said, you know, I think that this is a problem. And those 60% of the people were black. And then 60% of white people said, I don't think it's a problem. There is a real, real, true divide. And a lot of people who agree with what Ross Kaminsky said. So I want this conversation to take that into account as well, even if you disagree. When, when can I just say, sure. I, I'm not saying that I don't think there's a problem. Oh, I think there's a huge... There is a real, real, true... Uh, there was a St. Louis County poll done just last week, in which roughly 60% of the people said, you know, I think that this is a problem. And those 60% of people were black. And then 60% of white people said, I don't think it's a problem. There is a real real, true, divide, and a lot of people who agree with what Ross Kaminsky said. So I want this conversation. So you see, if you look at the statistics that she just brought out, 60% of black people said, I think it's a problem, okay? There's a problem with, you know, how things are going, how we're treated, and, you know, what you've done to us. And then 60% of white America said that we don't think it's a problem. You know why? Because they don't want to own up to what they did. They want to feel like they didn't do anything. And if you say something about what they did do, then it's, it's racism. We don't want to think about that. We don't want to be responsible for, that, for our actions. We want to be irresponsible and, and blame you. Blame you for our actions and blame you and call you a racist for bringing it up. When can I just say, sure. I, I'm not saying that I don't think there's a problem. I think there's a huge problem, and I think that middle-class white people who don't live near black neighborhoods should understand that it's a problem for them, too. Notice that he's mentioning white, 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 white. What I'm saying is that the language, when it starts being turned... The language. When it's, the language. That's the problem what he has. That uh, when it start, in, in a way that even just implies you're the problem because you're white, the guy never implied that. And that's the problem, because we never imply that someone is a problem because of what color they are. That was something that that so-called white America or Europeans created, that somebody was something because of a fucking color. We're looking at the actions that you did, you've committed. And just because you're white doesn't mean that... Uh, that like when we say so-called white man is wicked, we're not saying that you're wicked because your skin is white. We're saying you're wicked because of your actions that you've committed in the earth. So so-called white people, what they do is when you when you bring out their wickedness or the things that they've committed that was wicked or bad, 
they automatically turn around and say, well, I think it's, I think you're racist because you're saying that because I'm white. Hold on. We don't give a fuck about what color you are. Okay? Your actions is what we're condemning, not your fucking color. This guy right here just talking, he, he didn't even mention no fucking color. But you see the so-called white man, he 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 got to mention that color. He got to say that when it implies when it implies when it implies that that I'm the problem because I'm white. Nobody implied that. Your mind implied that. You thought that. That guy said nothing about you being a problem because you're white. How the fuck can a, a, a color cause a problem with people? It's not the colors. It's your action, but but that that leaves keep going. It ends the conversation and and removes any chance of of positive conversation. Is that what you're saying, Phil? No, absolutely not. Once again, the white wall of defense. We didn't do it. In reflection, you guys are racist. All right, so with that, just a quick video. With that, Karatazah say, all praise to Allah, Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders, great millstone. Um, um, peace and blessings to the brothers out there teaching and listening and watching. That say Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Barak, Atom, Shalom, Akim.